in this year yes yes and i'm looking for this uh, new society <laughs> uh, a very good evening to all and a very warm welcome and a very happy new year to each and every one of you this is going to be the first uh, uh, isa online pg class of 2023 and uh, this is the 74th uh, overall online pg class that we've had since we started and uh, every monday we have uh, we have a person of repute who shares and spares his valuable time uh, to teach on topic of uh, importance uh, today is no different today uh, we have a very important topic uh, fluid therapy as we all know is an important aspect of pediatric anesthesia and maintenance of perioperative fluid hemostasis uh, cannot be understated or the importance cannot be understated so the topic for today is perioperative fluid therapy in pediatric patients by dr mayank kumar and uh, the chair for the session uh, today is dr anila malde madam uh, to introduce uh, dr uh, anila ma'am one minute yeah so dr anila malde is a professor and head of the department of anesthesiology at the lokmanya tilak municipal medical college and general hospital of cyan in mumbai and uh, she is presently the md and da guide for the maharashtra university of health sciences and a faculty professor for post doctoral fellowship course in pediatric anesthesiology at ltmmc and ltmgh since 2012 she is the section editor of the pediatric anesthesia section of the ija she is the past president and the maharashtra state chapter uh, past president of the indian association of pediatric anesthesiologists and to her credit she has created a state of the art museum at the ltmmc there she has won many awards as best worker the first prize for best paper four times and co author and guide for the best paper for more than 10 15 times she is the abstract coordinator for the asian society of pediatric anesthesiology conference of 2017 as well as icon 2011 importantly she is the editor of a very important book for pediatric anesthesia a practical approach to anesthesia for emergency surgery where she editor for the pediatric anesthesia and comprehensive clinical anesthesia she has many publications in journals more than 20 textbook chapters 42 cme book chapters she has attended many international conferences nine international conferences many many national conferences and a total of uh, look at that 368 to introduce our speaker dr mayank dr mayank is uh, md anesthesiology from patna medical college and hospital in patna and an associate professor currently at the department of anesthesiology at aims in raipur chatisgarh he has interest in pediatric anesthesia regional anesthesia and airway management very many publications in national and international journals and uh, faculty in many national state level conferences as well as workshops so a very warm welcome to both of you uh, dr mayank and dr malde ma'am uh, dr malde ma'am uh, over to you ma'am you can uh, start and uh, a few words from you and then we can uh, give over the stage to dr uh, mayank yeah good evening to everybody it's nice to be there in the first meeting of 2023 and uh, it's a good beginning we are beginning with the new nitel and pediatric fluid management that topic is a very very important topic whether you are dealing with a small preterm baby or you are dealing with a major surgery like kyphoscoliosis or a neurosurgery craniostenosis corrections or a cardiac surgery the perioperative fluid management is one of the very very important topic and uh, i think let's hear from dr mayank kumar and i'm sure we will have a good discussion at the end of the lecture and whatever doubts are there that can be cleared you know so let's uh, begin with the first lecture of this 2023 yes thank you madam dr mayank all yours thank you anila ma'am and thank you for kind introduction by nisan sir <clears throat> so it's slide visible yes yes dr mayank your slides are visible you are audible thank you thank you 
so first of all very good evening and happy new year to all and i would like to thank isa dignitaries president secretaries bajwa sir ex secretary navin malhotra sir isa governing councils faculties pg students for the opportunity to be part of this pg online program so today my topic is peri operative fluid therapy in pediatric patients is a very important topic and very controversial and debatable topic so today's my outline is like physiological consideration about the total body fluid their compartments renal physiology nil parallel oral status very old holiday and cigar formula that is practicing uh, some physicians still now what fluid should be used with what what tonicity and how much glucose content should be and how much fluid should be given in perioperative sleep period and how we monitor the hydration status in perioperative period Dr. Mayank, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Mayank, please unmute yourself. Yeah. So total body content of uh, water is around fifty to eighty percent, especially in infants. It's around seventy to seventy-five percent of the body weight in preterm and low birth baby babies having eighty percent of the body weight in very low birth. preterm babies and in fetuses it's around 90% of the total body weight is the water but it's distributed unequal in various compartments so in early fetal life it's around 90% of total body water in <coughs> of body weight so 90% of the total body water is the total body weight so Out of now, out of ninety, it's sixty-five percent is the extracellular fluid, and twenty-five percent is the intracellular fluid. It's all also more than the reverse of the adult. In adults, it's around ICF is twenty to forty percent, and ECF is twenty percent. But in preterm infants, total body water decreased to eighty percent, and ECF forty-five percent, and in ICF increased to thirty-five percent. Term infant up to six months of age. its total body water is 75% and ecf is 40% icf is 35% in fans more than 6 months of age children adolescents in, and in adults total body water is 60% icf 40% and ecf is 20% it's reversed rather than the fetal life and term preterm in fans so in newborn ecf is very higher than the icf you can see in this chart total body water decreases from 90% to around 60 70 to 70% ecf decreases rapidly and it's almost equal it it's in around 3 months of age with the icf and it's increased it at around 1 1 1 year of age it's almost plateau till the adulthood this significant this is due to the significant diuresis and natriuresis leads to the decrease in the ecf compartment and icf increases due to the growth of cells in the body by and by about the one year it reaches the adult values gfr is very low in the uh, preterm term babies it's around 25 to 30% of the adult values and it re rapidly increases it doubles in 2 two, two weeks and triples in 3 weeks and reaches adult value by the 2 years and this is significantly impaired at the birth and ability to re regulate the large amount of solute and water is also limited during first several months of life we can see the gfr is very low in the several months in the early life they have new new units have diminished renal function especially premature infants their ability to excrete free water and solutes are impaired 
they have decreased reabsorbing capacity and they are obligate sodium loser concentrating ability is also low and it's around 50 to 60% of adult values and their diluting capacity matures by the 3 to 5 weeks of life neonatal ventricles are very less compliant rather than the adults and they are unable to handle intravascular volume overload and increased afterload so our first question is for pgs extracellular fluid in the term newborn is 10% or 20% 40% or 60% of the total body weight it's all the uh... audience members are currently muted so they are all encouraged to type in the chat box and uh, dr hina sangvi is the first to answer c uh, there are there are uh, there are other options d dr khwaja believes it is d 60% anu also believes it is 60% so now people feel that it is 60% the question is the total ecf in a term newborn is what percentage of the body weight Doctor Mayang, most of them believe it is D. Some people are now saying C. Yeah, C. Total C body weight. So we have a lot of questions. Right answer is C. C. Yeah. It's forty percent. You can see in this slide. Yes. I cannot able to move. Yeah. so at the term in fans ecf is around 40% of total body weight and in adults ecf is 20% and icf is 40% so right answer is c 40% of the body weight is the extracellular fluid in the term newborn so so this is npo status in the pre operative period so this is asa guidelines for npo status clear liquid should be stopped 2 hours before the elective surgery breast milk should be stopped 4 hours infant formula for 6 hours and solid fatty and fried foods should be stopped 8 hours before the elective surgery so there are new guidelines new consensus statements regarding the clear fluid status either it should be 2 hours or 1 hour or just before it can be taken so one consensus statement from the association of pediatric anesthesia of great britain and ireland european society and french society they updated the fluid fasting guidelines for children prior to elective anesthesia surgery and they, they uh, their statement are like that we the undersigned representatives of our respective nation societies agreed that based on current convincing evidence base unless there is clear contraindication it is safe and recommended for all children able to take clear fluids to be allowed and encouraged to have them up to 1 hour before elective general anesthesia so they are they have signed their statement and released and also ask the other societies to come up with their consensus statement so uh, they have also defined the clear fluid as it should be either water clear non opaque fruit juice or squash ready diluted drinks or non fizzy sports drinks it should be non thickened and non carbonated and ma ma their maximum volume of clear fluid is 3 ml per kg for 2 hour it's not has been defined volume but for 1 hour they have defined maximum they can uh, allow up to the 3 ml per kg so for 10 uh, 10 kg child we we can give only 30 ml and it should be non thickened non carbonated clear non opaque fruit juice especially uh, apple juice is most famous for this clear fluids before elective surgery and they recommend to take up to 1 hour so what are the fluid and electrolytes needs in the children this is vary at different ages and fluid requirements are higher in infants and children rather than adolescents because they have higher rate of 
metabolism and growth, increased surface area to weight ratio, higher insensible loss, decreased concentrating abilities, loss of solute, and increased obligatory fluid loss. But in neonates, they, are, they have higher extracellular fluid volume and that is excreted by the kidney in first three days especially and required less in fluid in the initial three days of life. Now come to the history. We are uh, following Holiday and Saga Segar formula till now and administration of IV maintenance fluid in children was originally described by them in 1957. It's around more than 50 years ago. And they first calculated the energy requirement according to the body weight in children. For first 0 to 10 kg, they, require, uh, they calculated 100 kilocalorie per kg per day, 10 to 20,000 plus 50 per kg, and more than 20, 1500 plus 20 per kg per day kilocalorie per day and they published the maintenance need for the water in parenteral fluid therapy in 1957 and they said that energy requirements is almost equivalent to water requirements in the resting state so for each kilocalorie to be metabolized uh, uh, ch children needs one ml of water so weight is almost e equivalent to energy expenditure uh, equivalent to fluid requirement. This is the same uh, uh, formula with fluid, less than 10 kg, 4 ml per kg, 100 ml per kg per day or 4 ml per kg per hour, 100 to 20 kg, 40 plus 2 ml per kg, about 10 kg per hour or 1000 ml plus 50 ml per kg, about 10 kg per day. Similarly, 20 kg for 60 ml plus 1 ml per kg about 20 kg and 1500 ml plus 25 ml per kg about 20 kg. This is the 4 to 1 rule given by the Holiday and Segar in 1957 for the maintenance fluid, especially in children and we also applied on the adults. And they also calculated the electrolytes needs in the children. Then calculated that sodium should be given 3 millimole per kg, potassium should be 2 millimole per kg per day, and chloride should be 3 millimole per kg per day. And dextrose should be 4 to 6 milligram per kg per minute. So after these, this publication, usual IV fluid given to children for decades was one third to one fourth, 0.33 to 0.25% of saline with 5% dextrose and that is hypotonic solution. In 1988, Lindahl SC have published the energy expenditure and fluid and electrolyte requirements in anesthetized infants and children. And they calculated that the energy expenditure in anesthetized children was 50% lower than the calculated by the Holiday and Sega but he calculated that the 166 ml rather than 100 ml calculated by the holiday saga, they calculated 166 ml of water were required to metabolize 100 calories under anesthesia. So they have good agreement in fluid requirement. They are have, have not agreement with the water requirement per kilocalorie, but having good agreement in fluid requirement between the two studies. So now comes to the MCQ 2. What should be the maintenance require, fluid requirement as per holiday and cigar in four years child for 15 kg? So we have, we have a lot of responses, uh, Dr. Mayank. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dinesh believes it is 60 ml per hour. Dr. Neeraj believes it is 50 ml per hour. And uh, most of them are between these two values, 50 and 60. Occasional 40 ml also has come, but uh, mostly it is between. And I think that the majority is for 50 ml per hour. So how can we be the 50 ml?
some also said the 60 ml yes some people have believed it is 60 ml some most of them believe it is 50 ml so it's a very simple formula it's given in the, the this Forty ml plus two ml per kg above ten kg, so it should be ten into four, uh, fifteen in ten into four forty plus five into ten, five into two ten. So it should be fifty ml per hour for maintenance fluid requirement as per holiday and cigar. Correct. Yes, that is that is what they they have written forty plus ten, fifty. Yeah. Yes, sir. So after calculating the uh, what amount of fluid, what fluid should be used? So holiday and cigar recommended two milli equivalent per hundred kilocalorie per day of potassium and three milli equivalent for the sodium and chloride. And this was met with the use of hypotonic solution, five percent dextrose with 0.2 percent of normal saline. But administering administering this hypotonic solution, like five percent dextrose with 0.2 percent normal saline, there is very high risk of developing hyponatremia. And there are many cases reported that, like this one, post tonsillectomy hyponatremia, a possible lethal complication. This is a CT scan of three-year-old healthy child that was operated for adenotonsillectomy and found to have post-op lethargy, drowsiness, and seizures. Emergency CT was done and it was found that cerebral edema was there. And blood investigation suggests sodium nit <coughs> sodium serum sodium was 116 milli equivalent per liter. It was very low. And urinary sodium was 48 milli equivalent per liter, and patient had received only 5% of dextrose in intraoperative period. So this was the possible lethal complication of this 5% dextrose. This is a very hypotonic solution. And another uh, uh, case series have been published in French journal, like several hyponatremic encephalopathy after pediatric surgery. In seven children aged three to six years, ASA one or two operated for some indications and presented at 11th post-operative hour with seizure or ep status epilepticus or vomiting and loss of consciousness. Their median GCS was seven or only seven. One ch child was presented with the respiratory arrest, all suggesting towards the hyponatremia and serum sodium was, mean serum sodium was 120 millilor per liter. All children had received perioperative fluid at hypotonic solution, mainly 5% dextrose, and they were treated with fluid restriction, sodium chloride infusions, and diuretics. And six children come out with very good neurological outcome, but one child died from brain death just because they have given 5% dextrose in the perioperative peri period. So fasting, <clears throat> what fluid should be used depending on the fasting deficit, third space loss, surgical loss, all our losses are from the extracellular fluid compartment. So the fluid given must be identical to the extracellular fluid with higher sodium and chloride, lesser bicarb, potassium, calcium, and it should be only isotonic fluid should be used. So why isotonic nine, not hypotonic? In intraoperative period, there is very high level of ADH secretions. It's due to the hypovolemia, hemorrhage, pain, nausea, vomiting, and stress of the anesthesia and surgery. And this high ADH level leads to the decreased urinary losses, decreased insensible loss, sweating, respiratory losses, and administration of hypotonic fluids all leads to the dilutional hyponatremia, all which has been shown in the this case series and case report. And this hypo, dilutional hyponatremia leads to the cerebral edema and even respiratory insufficiency that can lead to the death of the patient. 
now come to the dextrose how much dextrose should be in the fluid to balance the hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia so should we give dextrose in the fluids hypo either hypoglycemia can occur or hypo, uh, hypo, hyperglycemia can occur hypoglycemia can leads to a stress response and alters cerebral blood flow and metabolism permanent neurodevelopment impairment can occur in child and several studies could not demonstrate frequent occurrences of hypoglycemia in fasting pediatric patients but in 31% of children below the third percentile of weight developed hypoglycemia because in our scenario in india more than very uh, patients are uh, below the 30 percentile of the weight so we should aware of this situation in uh, our scenario and hypoglycemia is also associated with long fasting durations hyperglycemia induces osmotic diuresis and dehydration especially in small preterm infants and it increases the risk of hypoxic ischemic brain or spinal cord damage especially in uh, with hypoxia so routine dextrose administration is no longer advised for otherwise healthy children receiving anesthesia so now question number 3 is what is the best isotonic fluid for the children either isolite p normal saline high percent dextrose with normal saline or plasma line so again dr mayank we have a brisk response and uh, dr vijaya believes it is isolite p she was the first one to respond and then there are many other users who believe a isolite p yeah most of them most of them believe it is isolite p occasional uh, plasma light is there plasma light and the mostly it is uh, i believe it is isolite p many many responses are there is between isolite and plasma light so we'll have to discuss that so isolite p is the hypotonic solution we should not give isolite p at any cost to children in uh, uh, pediatrician are giving this isolite p or very uh, 0.25% or 0.5% of normal saline in newborns only up to the neonate period and after that they also stop this so isolite p should not be given in perioperative period at any time so answer is the plasma light is the best isotonic fluid for the children isolite p is the not isotonic it's hypotonic solution normal saline is slightly hyp <coughs> hypertonic and 5% dextrose normal saline is also hypertonic okay so isolite p should not be given plasma light is the answer plasma light is the answer this is balanced all solution and we should give only this solution only either you can give the ringer lactate if balance this plasma light is not available so indications of the dextrose it should be given first 48 hours of life in preterm and term infants they are already receiving the dextrose for maintenance child on parental nutrition low body weight less than third percentile having prolonged surgery and having extensive regional anesthesia with a reduced stress response if the stress response is not there so patient can go into the hypoglycemia so we should increase the, uh, the dextrose in the maintenance fluid so these are the indication of dextrose in intraoperative period this is one of the uh, paper <clears throat> novel isotonic balanced electrolyte solution with 1% glucose for intraoperative fluid therapy in children and result of this past study shows that in 107 patients they are up to 4 years and they have given 
intraop administration of balanced salt solution with 1% dextrose and they found that this avoid the perioperative acid base balance hyponatremia hyperglycemia ketoacidosis in infants and toddlers another <clears throat> ej european consensus of such statement for intraoperative fluid therapy in children and they said that intraoperative background infusion in children should have an osmolarity and sodium concentration as close to the physiological range as possible and it should contain 1 to 2 per 2.5% of glucose and should also include metabolic anions like acetate lactate or malate as bicarbonate precursors to prevent hyperchloremic acidosis so these precursors by meta, uh, acetate lactate or malate are not found in the normal saline and they have very high concentration of chloride and that can lead to the hyperchloremic acidosis so normal saline is out and ringer lactate or plasma light like solutions are the very close to the physiological range and but it should contain the 1 to 2.5% of glucose and this is a statement given by the european <coughs> uh, society so what should be the intraoperative rate of in fluid infusion so we have uh, said that if for uh, holiday and cigar they give the maintenance 4 to 1 4 ml per kg for 10 rest 10 2 ml per kg and after that 1 ml per kg per hour for maintenance and for deficit we calculated the npo period into what 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 should be the maintenance uh, multiplied by the NP, npo period and third space law, loss depend on the depending on the type of surgery either major minor or intermediate type of surgery so all three we calculate and give in the intraoperative period so one should think that it is it too much of fluid we are giving intraoperative so for maintenance holiday and cigar 4 to 1 still in clinical use but simpler and more accurate 4 to 20 ml per kg per hour for all three losses of a balanced salt solution is the best so for deficit pre operative fasting state with continued insensible losses and urine urine output also consider any pre operative bleeding vomiting and diarrhea sometimes we for, forget to take history in especially uh, sometimes in uh, ent surgeries pre operative bleeding was there sometimes vomiting diarrhea was there we forget to uh, take the history of that so we should uh, consider all these and total deficit should be number of hours into hourly maintenance and ferman et al proposed to replace this deficit 50% deficit in the first hour and rest 50% in two divided hours in second and third hours in intraoperative period so for third space losses replacement volume based on the depending on the sur surgical <coughs> in interventions like minor surgery 1 to 2 ml per kg per hour moderate surgery 2 to 5 ml per kg per hour for major surgery it should be 6 to 10 ml per kg per hour but in 2008 chapel at all uh, published a paper in anesthesiology and they say that the classical third space is not existing and routine replacement of high insensible and third special losses should be abolished in favor of demand related fluid regimens especially in uh, uh, laparoscopic surgery there is no third space now it is uh, more than 50% of surgeries are laparoscopic so there is no chance of third space in uh, laparoscopy and they said that even in open surgery there is this there is no third space exists so we should replace the blood loss with the isotonic crystalloids colloids or blood balanced salt solution should be given 3 ml of solution for every ml of blood loss and third space loss should be replaced with the isotonic fluid 
about three months of age, transfusion target should be kept at 24% and no consensus re regarding below three months of age. Association of Pediatric Anesthesia Great Britain IRD and APA GBI consensus guidelines and European consensus statements recommends the intraoperative use of low dextrose 1 to 2.5 percent containing isotonic fluids which have been shown to maintain acceptable blood glucose level and prevent electrolyte imbalance during surgery. So now come to the MCQ 4. What Man, you can just take a glass of water. I just read it out for you. You can just relax a little bit. So fourth MCQ indication for intraoperative dextrose in children are all except. Okay, so I have already started getting answers. Preterm and term infants already receiving dextrose. Child on parenteral nutrition. Extensive regional anesthesia with reduced stress response, or an otherwise healthy child. And uh, we're very attentive. I mean, most of them, all of them, almost have mentioned uh, D for Delhi. Uh, An otherwise healthy child. Uh, is that correct, Mayan? Yes, sir. It's uh, correct. Yeah, and I think it is almost hundred percent. Everybody has mentioned that. So now percentage of uh, right answer is growing. Right or wrong, you know, anybody who answers deserves a clap. You know, it is just to write an answer in the chat box itself deserves a clap. So, you know, a big clap for everyone, right or wrong. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So come to the monitoring of the hydration status. It can be assessed by the uh, clinical examinations like capillary refill time, skin stagger, front nails. Even in major procedures, we can do the peripheral venous or capillary blood gas analysis, arterial venous catheters, arterial blood the ABG on hourly basis to see the lactate and electrolyte status. And to assess the fluid responsiveness, Tendelenburg position, passive leg raise, raising are not efficient in young, especially in younger children because their size is low, uh, smaller than the adults, and so the PLR test is not useful to assess the fluid responsiveness in children. One other method is like external pressure to the liver. This causes the blood volume to shift from the intra-abdominal to intrathoracic space and it leads to the increase in uh, blood pressure and in, in tidal carbon dioxide. This indicates the positive fluid responsiveness. So other parameters for monitoring the hydration status is like uh, this uh, heart rate, arterial blood pressure, pulse oximetry, CVP. These are the static parameters. And we have dynamic parameters like PPV, pulse pressure variations, systolic pressure variation, SPV, stroke volume variation, IVC variability, esophageal Doppler indices, plate variability index. These are the dynamic parameters are more accurate to monitor the hydration status. And we can, uh, this, these uh, monitors are not available every time. And we can use only in the major surgery where there is higher blood shift is anticipated. Now come to the blood transfusion therapy. So we should remain vigilant to regarding all blood losses, even in because their safety margin is very low in children, especially in uh, have small children. So uh, 22 gauge catheter is the appropriate size to give the blood rapidly. Blood volume in preterm child is 100 milliliter per kg, in term it's 90 ml per kg, infants 75 to 80, children 70 to 75, and in adult it's 65 to 70 ml per kg. This is blood volume and this, uh, this is important to calculate the MABL. This MABL maximum allowable blood loss, it's it is calculated with the estimated blood volume into starting hematocrit minus target hematocrit 
divided by the starting hematocrit like uh, one of the example is like a 3 year old child at 15 kg with starting hematocrit is 38% if target set hematocrit is 25% so mabl maximum allowable blood loss would be 15 into 70 into 38 minus 25 by 38 15 into 70 is the estimated blood volume 15 is the weight and 70 ml per kg is the blood volume and it calculated with 360 ml so our uh, mabl is should be 360 ml if child have starting hematocrit of 38 percent so hematocrit values in the 20 percent range are generally tolerable well tolerable by the most children but exceptions are preterm infants, term newborns, and children with cyanotic congenital heart disease or those with respiratory failure in need of high oxygen carrying capacity and they need higher target hematocrit at least 30%. Transfusion trigger is usually accepted to be around hemoglobin of 7 to 8 gram per dl in children having intraoperative losses. Hemoglobin of 7 gram per dl is acceptable if there is no active or ongoing loss or and stable clinical parameters. And amount of PRBC required to increase the hemoglobin concentration by 1 gram is 4 to 5 ml per kg and whole blood is 6 ml per kg to increase the 1 gram percent of hemoglobin in children. In term <coughs> neonates, fluid in the neonates, more than 6 36 weeks of age, the maintenance fluid is reduced in the first few days of after birth. It's around 10 to 15 more percent of its body weight in water lost during this time. So they need less amount of fluid in first few days. So in day one, they need only two to three ml per kg per hour with 10% dextrose. In day two, three to four ml, day 3, 3 to 5 ml, day 4, 4 to 6 and day 7, 4 to 7 ml, 7 ml per kg per hour and it should be 5 to 10 percent dextrose with 0.22 percent of saline. For the rest of the neonatal period, a maintenance rate of 150 ml per kg per 24 hour is appropriate and these are the uh, fluid uh, used as a maintenance but not during the intraoperative period. Intraoperative period, it should be the isotonic uh, solutions would be given. This uh, guidelines from the Association of Scientific Medical Societies in Germany, and they give uh, they have uh, given the very elaborative view on the perioperative fluid therapy, and they suggest that perioperative fasting time should be as short as possible and they come down to the one one hour a physiologically composed balanced isotonic electrolyte solution with one to 2.5 percent of glucose is recommended for intraoperative background infusion if pre-operative and post-operative fasting times are short perioperative iv fluid should not be necessarily given in children beyond neonatal age who drink sufficient volumes and undergo short procedures if less than one hour with venous access in place. So, if there is very short procedure less than one hour and blood fluid shift or blood loss is very uh, not anticipated, very minimal, then IV fluid can be omitted if patient can drink sufficient of what uh, volume in pre-op or post-op period. But venous access should be in place, venous, uh, venous access should not be omitted at any time. And it should be checked if fluid is not given, it should be checked if it's in proper position or not. A balanced isotonic electrolyte solution should be used for fluid therapy and additional balanced salt solution without glucose can be used in patients with circulatory instability until the desired effect is achieved with boluses of 10 to 20 ml per kg. Additional use of colloid, albumin, gelatin, hydroxyethyl starch has 
is recommended to recover normobolemia and to avoid fluid overload when crystalloids alone are not sufficient and blood products are not indicated or not available. So they have given rule of 10 for background infusion or called maintenance infusion, including the fluid deficit maintenance and blood loss. They have given uh, balanced salt solution with glucose. Glucose should be 1 to 2.5 percent. And initial dose should be 10 ml per kg per hour. It's higher than holiday cigar. It's total 10 ml, per, whatever the weight, it should be the 10 ml per kg per hour. It's a starting background infusion for the any child going ele elective surgery. They have suggested background infusion around 10 ml per kg per hour. For fluid therapy, for resuscitation, they have given without glucose balance all solution around 10 to 20 ml per kg depending on the response and volume therapy with albumin gelatin has 5 to 10 ml per kg and transfusion of blood product like RBC, FFP, platelet 10 ml per kg. They have given rule of 10 by this Germany society. This nice guideline in 2015, they have given uh, for routine maintenance isotonic crystalloid that contains sodium in range of 131 to 154 and should be given in 4 to 1 uh, like holiday cigar. New net isotonic crystalloid with 5 to 10 percent of dextrose for replacement and distribution consider isotonic crystalloid that contains sodium 131 to 154 and for fluid resuscitation they have also said that glucose free crystalloid that contains sodium 131 to 154 with voluses of 10 to 20 ml per kg over less than 10 minutes. And for intraoperative period fluids, uh, background maintenance would be isotonic balance solution 1 to 2.5 percent dextrose and deficit divided in 1 to 3 R. And in event of hypovolemia, isotonic solution should be given 10 ml per kg or PRBC. And normal saline is not routinely used because large volume can cause hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. For post-operative fluid therapy, surgery, pain, nausea, vomiting, all are potent cause of ADH release. And this ADH can lead to the volume retention. So with hypotonic fluid can cause hyponatremia. And this is, this is the uh, uh, fluid volume uh, recommended in the post-operative period for first 12 hours it's 2 1 and 0.5 rather than 4 to 1 it's 2 1 and 0.5 ml per kg depending on the weight 10 10 10 to 20 and more than 20 ml 20 kg of weight they recommended 2 1 and 0.5 up to first 12 hours after surgery and if no oral intake is given uh, to the patient so then it increased to four to one uh, that is equivalent to holiday and cigar formula that should be given after 12 hours after surgery patient is not taking oral properly oral intake and to avoid over infusions in pediatrics in neonates and infant you we should use syringes or infusion pump to give the iv fluid in uh, intraoperative or post-operative period and for toddlers pediatric micro drip sets with either 100 ml containers or whatever containers uh, smaller containers are available should be given so uh, what are the challenges to give this balanced salt solution because this recommended solution are neither currently com uh, commercially supported or not indeed available in the market like balanced salt solution with 1 to 2.5 percent of glucose this is not available till now and clinicians may tend to use suboptimal fluid or to compose their own fluid, fluid mixture because we need to mix the dextrose to make, make this 1 to 2.5 percent of uh, glucose which could potentially lead to atrogenic complication if either you can give another drug uh, rather than dextrose with clinical error. So these recommendations are just a framework and it is to critically importance to 
individualize this fruit therapy in unstable children so this concludes the, this uh, session yes uh, thank you dr man uh, madam anila madam yeah uh, can you hear me yes ma'am yes, ma yeah i must compliment dr mayank for taking it uh, in a very basic manner the fluid uh, management in the perioperative period the most wonderful part was uh, he covered the basis like why we require a lesser amount of fluid say so 60 to 70 ml per kg on in the first week of life and uh, he did explain even the nicely the basis of holiday sicar formula the second most important part was that uh, he displayed nice mcqs so we could make out like what is the general awareness about the fluid and uh, one thing was very shocking for me was uh, that still many people came out with the answer of isolite p in the perioperative period so that means we as a isc body we anesthesiologists especially those who are claiming themselves to be pediatric anesthesiologists have to make a more awareness about actual use and uh, what are the implications of using isolite p especially in the perioperative period and uh, rightly dr mayank uh, specified with the very good examples a simple surgery like tonsillectomy if not managed in the perioperative period in the fluid wise then can lead to severe complications and even mortality so that was a very great he briefed about even uh, the perioperative blood uh, transfusion trigger and how do we calculate the major allowable uh, minimum allowable uh, this thing blood loss a maximum allowable blood loss and uh, how much uh, blood transfusion should be given now i saw in the few this things there was a question about what is the difference between the osmolarity and tonicity whether isotonic fluid is same as iso osmolar so i would wish that dr mayank uh, could you take up this question and explain uh, first that before we take up the other questions ma'am i would try to uh... clear this osmolarity and tonicity osmolarity is the uh, osmolarity of the fluid depends on the uh, uh, this two into uh, sodium and uh, glucose and blood urea nitrogen but blood urea nitrogen urea is freely uh, 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 passed from the uh, through the cells intracellular and intra extracellular so it's it it's not adding to the tonicity so only uh, sodium and glucose add to the tonicity of the fluid depending on the content of the sodium and flu, uh, glucose but glucose is immediately taken up by the cells so only sodium and other electrolytes that cannot cross the cells that uh, makes the tonicity of the fluid so okay do you want to add anything dr mayank uh i'm not sure whether the person who asked the question is uh, satisfied with the answer and has clearly understood i would like to simplify it further for the benefit of audience when we talk about tonicity it is mainly in the terms of electrolytes okay because they are active and they are freely crossing across the semi permeable membranes when we talk about osmolarity it is uh, the osmotically active solutes that also constitute let's uh, let me explain further with an example now if we take a 5% dextrose solution which is not containing any electrolytes if you calculate osmolarity there's a simple formula for calculating the osmolarity in a solution it is 2 into sodium plus potassium plus glucose level divided by 18 glucose level in milligram percent divided by 18 plus blood urea nitrogen divided by 2.88 now what happens when you take 5% dextrose and if you apply this formula 
easily you will get the answer it is about 264 milli osmoles per liter so it is osmotically quite active versus if you take ringer electrolyte solution ringer electrolyte solution does not contain any 5% dextrose it is simply containing sodium potassium chloride okay and calcium so when you calculate the osmolarity because it is 131 milliequivalents per liter of sodium again it comes to nearly around 274 uh milli osmoles per liter osmolarity okay but the tonicity is totally different tonicity of 5% dextrose in vitro it will give the tonicity but when the 5% dextrose is transfused into the blood stream what happens glucose will be easily taken up by the cells and what will remain is a free water so if the free water is remaining in the cells i mean in the remaining in the blood stream what would happen that free water will easily cross the cell uh, semi permeable membrane and it will go into the intracellular uh, compartment so it is a hypotonic fluid so it is a very much hypotonic fluid okay now if you consider the, something like a normal saline normal saline it is containing 154 milliequivalent per liter of sodium so 2 into 154 so 308 is the milli osmoles per liter is the osmolarity the tonicity is slightly higher osmolarity is slightly higher compared to the blood uh, blood stream okay now if you consider dns solution that is containing 5% dextrose plus normal saline what will happen the osmolarity because of combination of dextrose and normal saline it will become 308 plus 264 so it will be ne nearly becoming around 574 so it will be hyperosmolar solution so there is a difference between a tonicity and osmolarity what we are interested is that tonicity because of the electrolyte solution is very important in the perioperative period because if you give hypotonic fluid then more of the fluid rather than remaining in the intravascular compartment it will go into the cells and the cells will become edematous and especially when the brain become edematous because of the fluid transfusion because of the water transfusion inside the cells brain edema will be there and patient will have a cloudy of consciousness seizures and coma and it can lead to even respiratory arrest and death so isotonic fluid is recommended throughout the perioperative period and isolite p is no more directly even manufactured it's not even now available in india okay because of the lots and lots of mortality was there because of the perioperative administration of this hypotonic fluid i hope that satisfies the person who has asked the question uh, if there is any further doubt please come out and ask the question over here yes ma'am most of the audience is currently muted we'll give them the option of unmuting themselves and asking the questions and interacting with the uh, sorry ma'am yeah most of them uh, are unmuted uh, right now so we will give them the option the, the option to unmute themselves has been given so the audience can now unmute themselves and uh, they can interact with the uh, speaker and especially this uh, you have uh, very uh, elaborately and very well explained the difference between the two if the person who has asked the question is here they can uh, uh, further clarify i think this question was asked by dr naga swami Uh, good evening to all i am dr nagaswami from chennai <clears throat> are you able to hear me yes sir good evening go ahead sir yeah happy new year to all of you i just asked this question i am a retired professor of anesthesia from stanley medical college chennai i asked this question because basically this question is asked in the viva for all the post graduates to clarify this <clears throat> when talking about iv fluids 
whether it is in pediatrics or is it in adults. Tonicity simply refers to the solution when they are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. Whereas you talk about osmolality when you talk about the individual weightage or the content of this solution. So that is the simplest answer that you can give in the examination. So that when you take even isoosmotic, isotonic fluid, it will not stay in the intravascular compartment. If you go through the book of uh, podcast for FRCA students, there are two beautiful examples given. If you infuse one liter of 5% dextrose and if you infuse one liter of 0.9% saline, <clears throat> how much will remain? If you see only 84 ml will remain in the intravascular compartment, whereas 328 ml will remain if you give saline. So that example will easily clear all the doubts for the students. And you talk about osmolality <clears throat> based on the composition uh, in the fluid, even before transfusion. Whereas tonicity should be used only when there is a membrane separating the two fluids and where they can exchange from one compartment to another. So that's the answer I always teach them and that I think is the correct description. <clears throat> All right, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, Ma'am, if you permit, there are a few questions in the chat box. Uh, we can just read them out. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, Dr. Mayank. Uh, uh, there is another question. How to estimate the percentage of dehydration by Nagaswami, sir? You need to unmute yourself. Yeah. How can we estimate percentage of dehydration? That uh, That is what I believe, sir, wants to know. Uh, is that based on the uh, clinical science? Weight loss? Yes, yes, sir. Clinical science uh, like uh, capillary refill time, skin tiger, uh, front tunnel, by seeing the front tunnel, heart rate, blood pressure, urine output. These are the parameters we can judge the hydration status. Yes, correct. I mean, uh, I believe yeah, that. Yeah. Can I add something? Yes. The yes. most important is the weight of the child. So if if suppose the parents are uh, aware about the uh, weight of the child, the previous weight, the last weight of the child, and uh, now the current weight, because you know if we can easily uh, assess the severity of dehydration by dividing them into mild, moderate, and severe dehydration. So if it is a five percent uh, weight loss, then it's a mild. Then uh, ten percent is a moderate, and severe one is a fifteen percent of weight loss. And uh, each uh, this thing clinically, obviously, we see the mainly the parameters checked are the skin turgor, mucosal turgor, eyeballs, then uh, you know, this uh, pulse rate is seen, the urine output is seen, capillary refill time is seen, the blood pressure uh, takes some time to drop down. So by the time the blood pressure comes down, it is a severe dehydration. So clinical, si clinical signs are very important. So each and every uh, emergency case, um, because mainly the abdominal emergency cases where we are expecting a lot of fluid loss, we must uh, make a practice to, you know, uh, not only assess, but record it on the paper that how much is the severity of the dehydration. And uh, you know, 10 ml per kg per percentage of that dehydration needs that much is a fluid deficit and that needs to be corrected yes man i believe the next question by dr rajni also uh, is slightly to do with that uh, she wants to know whether we add that uh, compensatory fluid for vasodilatation caused during iv induction which is done for adults in intraoperative maintenance that compensatory vascular expansion uh, i believe that is what she wants to know uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't think it is very prominent in pediatrics, is it, uh, Dr. Mike? Would you like to uh, take that? No, sir, it's not uh, like that. We should give the compensatory fluid for vasodilation because uh, there is not such vasodilation, in the, especially in pediatric age group. 
<coughs> especially if you are not giving especially an, a spinal anesthesia in older children then it course, would be even for iv induction that compensatory vascular expansion uh, may not be very uh, even for adults these days the next yeah. uh, question ma'am and uh, dr mayank yeah yeah so uh, dr hina sang coming to the previous question sorry to sorry. yes 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 ma'am please ma'am you are unmuted please unmute yourself ma'am anila ma'am please unmute yourself hello yes. can you hear me yes yes ma'am hello can you hear me yes we can hear you madam yeah uh, see uh, we need not uh, uh, you know prior we need not give but we have to see the response of the child now see at times if the child is over starving okay these days we don't give uh, initially you know fluid deficit uh, correction but if the patient responds in the form of little slight hypotension okay after induction with the iv or inhalational agent then it is better to give simultaneously some amount of fluid and uh, in the laparoscopic surgeries this is a uh, slightly more important so if it is uh, if the patient has responded in the form of hypotension uh, some degree of hypotension with the iv or inhalational induction it is better to give the fluid at that particular time yes ma'am agreed uh, uh next question is by dr hina sangvi uh she wants to know whether we can formulate fluid to be given in the intraoperative period uh, because plasma light is not always available not available uh, is, is we can That's give the ringer lactate uh, which is used now uh, very uh, frequently every uh, in other hospital uh, even plasma light is not available uh, all the time and not uh, it's also called not cost effective like ringer lactate so we can give the ringer lactate in the same manner okay and similar is the See, majority of the time 90% of the time we are using ringer lactate only as a balanced sol solution definitely because of the economic advantage now certain cases like those who are practicing pediatric liver transplantations or if the patient is uh, having a uh, some cause of uh, you know uh this thing liver failure there it becomes important to give the acetate containing fluid rather than the lactate containing fluid so there the plasma light will have a definite uh, advantage uh, all acetate gluconate malate containing fluids will have a definite advantage compared to the ringer lactate but in majority 90 95% of the uh, patients the ringer lactate serves the purpose <laughs> so that is the balanced sole solution of current choice at least in our country rather than the liquid right. containing fluid so Thank there the plasma light will have a definite uh, advantage uh, all so uh, yeah dr rajni wants to know if there is commercially available uh, dextrose solution of 1 or 2% is not available what is the next best option and uh, i believe uh, Uh, there somebody has tried to answer that by uh, in the chat box itself we can remove 20 ml from 500 ml rl and add 20 ml of 25% dextrose this will make it 1% dextrose solution with the uh, balanced salt solution dr mayang yes sir likewise uh, in uh, we are giving the fluid in the pediatric drip set in 100 ml solution uh, you can give the 25% of uh, dextrose in uh, either yeah, you can give 2 ml or uh, 4 ml 4 ml will lead to the 25% of 4 ml uh, dextrose solution will lead to the 1% of the uh, dextrose uh, either you 50% solution you, you give 4 ml then lead to the 2% of glucose of in 100 ml rl or plasma light whatever yes uh, ma'am next question uh, may i ask yeah Uh, what uh, to administer in the intraoperative period if we do not have one to two point four percent dextrose with the balanced salt solution? That is uh, by Doctor Alan Krita. It can be made with uh, either uh, ringer lactate or plasma light. Uh, add the dextrose. 
डॉक्टर पंकज गुप्ता सर इन द फर्स्ट टू डेज मेजर न्यूनेटल सर्जरी इट इज रिकमेंडेड टेन परसेंट डेक्सट्रोज बट ही फील दैट पोस्ट ऑपरेटिव बैलेंस ऑल सोल्यूशन रिमेन्स बी एस एल रिमेन्स फोर हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम वॉट इज योर ओपिनियन सर बी एस एल वॉट वॉट इज बी एस एल ब्लड शुगर blood sugar remains 400 to 600 for a long time so what is the what is your opinion he he has now switched over to 0.45% dns in the last few years dr pankaj sir so i think uh, ma'am yeah yeah please dr maya go ahead with the answer yes sir ma'am i think 10% dextrose they, uh, how much they have given it depends on that uh, they should give in the only for the maintenance then i think blood sugar will not raise like that 400 or 600 uh, but if all the fluid for the losses and uh, third space loss and maintenance if we, we give 10% dextrose uh, maybe that the reason for high blood sugar yeah uh, hi, hi dr my i will can i can i comment something yes, yes ma'am uh, yeah uh, since uh, 2006 since i am doing only exclusive pediatric anesthesia and we have a lot of neonatal chunk so in my experience practically intraoperatively since last many 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 years i have never given intraoperatively 10% dextrose containing fluid yeah because uh, in the first 48 hours of the life in the neonatal intensive care unit where the when the patient is not getting operated it is the right choice to have a 10% dextrose fluid but intraoperatively because of the stress reaction even though the baby has received anesthesia analgesia still because of the stress response there is rise in the blood sugar level majority of the time the fluid containing 2.5% max in a preterm baby 5% dextrose suffices so intraoperatively at least 10% dextrose containing solution is not given to give you further clarity what i would say is that intraoperatively in a newborn anyway the fluid requirement is less in the first you know, 24 to 48 hours and whatever is getting lost intraoperatively it is mainly third space losses okay because of the exposure and all so there you are supposed to be giving all that solution is of a balanced sol solution so obviously it it is very difficult you know that one side you will start uh, in a one iv line you will start ring elected plane to manage that third space loss and another side you will start in another iv line maintenance fluid containing dextrose so practically what we do is we prepare in a burette set that is a 100 ml burette set we prepare 50 ml fluid we keep ring elected nearly major surgeries early we check the blood sugar depending on the blood sugar levels we add the additional glucose in that burette containing ring elected okay that is how we manage practically the patients because it's in, uh, because usually if a major surgery is there one side you may require for inotrope or you may require for the blood transfusion so another iv line you are giving fluid so you know you can't afford to have two two iv lines one for ring elected one for dextrose containing maintenance fluid so this is the way practically we manage very nicely explained ma'am very practical uh, tips uh, dr pankaj gupta sir could you please unmute yourself and uh, you were wanting to say something sir yeah hello can you hear me good evening sir yeah good evening good evening good evening madam nice to hear because uh, yes uh, this, thank you ten percent thing has, has always been a you know big dilemma this some of the neonatologists that i work with i mean they invariably used to call me uh, because i was still using 10% extras for quite some time as was the dictum and what i was taught and uh, uh, when i found this report of 4 to 5 4 600 ml for almost every neonate then i switched over to 0.45 uh, dns now as uh, and i feel like it's ready it's readily available also now but uh, uh, i feel even i personally feel rl is the best i mean i would still prefer using ring elected uh, sir i beg to little differ with you 
because mm -hmm. scientifically when you give 0.45% dns that means glucose is a 5% in that okay it is yeah. the saline which is 0.45% okay so right. that saline is containing 77 milliequivalent per liter of sodium okay the this thing levels are about 130 to 140 milliequivalent per liter of sodium and what we are losing is that sodium containing fluid which is there extra solute fluid about 130 to 140 milliequivalent per liter sodium containing fluid so it it, it cannot be like intraoperatively it is not correct to give 0.45% dns D dextrose part 5% is okay but the saline part of that becomes a hypo uh, nitremic so intraoperatively whatever we are preparing that should be in a balanced sol solution so your suggestion is can you please repeat it madam so my suggestion is in the ringer lactate you can add whatever amount of dextrose you want the freely everywhere 25% dextrose and uh, 50% dextrose ampules are available so we can take calculate take a current uh, correct amount of glucose and add into the ringer lactate to make it 1.12 1 1.25% 1 yeah 1 to 2.5% and then we need to do blood sugar Great. Uh, madam, thank, thank, thanks a lot, madam. Now I have one more question. Uh, yeah. When we when we are doing gastric pull-ups, I mean, especially one surgeon who comes from Nagpur, he mm -hmm. insists on uh, you know dehydrating the patient. He does uh, prefers uh, doing a posterior pull through. He mm -hmm. goes uh, 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 through the posterior mediastinum, and mm -hmm. uh, he insists on not giving more than two to four ml of fluid. And I have done about four, five or six cases with him, and I have mm -hmm. found that. The urine output does remain uh, 0.5 ml per hour. Per kg. Yeah. So, what is the suggestion on this on your fluid, uh, uh, real fluid yeah. deprivation for some specific surgeries like posterior yeah. control? Yeah. Yeah. See, whenever there is extensive intestinal surgeries or this gastric pull-up surgeries, okay, mm -hmm. if you give uh, as recommended something like this 10 ml per kg per hour fluid and all, it becomes quite excessive. at yeah. the end of the day the baby will have a, you know child will have a lot of intestinal edema and yes. if there is a lot of intestinal edema then the healing becomes a problem exactly. so later on that anastomosis don't get sustained yes. so wherever extensive intestinal surgery is there at that time what we do is we do not give the liberal crystalloids we restrict the crystalloids whatever blood loss is there immediately we try to correct that particular blood loss so we avoid giving excessive crystalloid fluids in this kind of surgeries for the right reason that that should not be intestinal edema because whenever intestinal edema is there the anastomosis healing becomes a big problem and uh, because obviously it is yeah. occupying i mean you are going either posterior or whatever retrosternal at that time the edematous bowel hampers everything okay yes. in our institute in some of the institutes people do ventilate for two days and all whereas i am extubating on the table without any problems because i am restricting the fluids in the intraoperative period and 0.5 ml per kg per our urine output is good enough we don't have to worry about it and uh, if, you know, if you give excessive fluids there'll be excessive urine output you will be chasing it so it will create a vicious cycle okay yeah. no, he he insists not more than 4 ml per hour <laughs> 4 ml per kg per hour yes so correct I, 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 yeah correct so you just need 4 to 6 ml per kg per hour you don't need more than that okay oh. okay i think that that would have answered the question by dr upasna also what is the fluid of choice in perioperative period these discussions uh mm -hmm. Uh, you, there's another you. one uh, please clarify what is the suitable fluid for pediatric uh, neonatal intestine any intestine or intraoperatively balanced sol solution ringer lactate is the most suitable fluid and okay. depending on the glucose levels you need to add extra glucose right sir uh i think uh, 
what is the ideal blood gluco blood uh, sugar level during intraoperative period dr vijaya kelgaonkar wants to know and uh, how to calculate the deficit ideal blood sugar level during intraoperative period is it the same as adults in pediatric patients yes it is more or less same it is more or less same as the adult patient and whenever suppose there is a hypoglycemia okay in a adult we give something like uh, 25% or 50% dextrose but that cannot be given in a baby so best solution to manage hypoglycemia say uh, you measure the blood sugar with the glucose i mean uh, glucometer and you find out that the blood sugar is just 50 mg percent so what would you do so it is a 2 ml per kg 10% dextrose can be given to the patient and uh, finally i think the last uh, question that i see in the chat box dr rajni wants to know about the eras protocols uh, is it applied to children as well uh, the eras protocols early recovery for children and recovery after surgery protocols yes they do apply for the children also perfect perfect so uh, now uh, i see our own secretary navin sir navin sir i must compliment uh, both madam and dr myang uh, such a beautiful and excellent discussion uh, for the talk also and the post session uh, thank you madam for your uh, uh, nice inputs it was a good learning for me personally as well thank you to both of you yes sir and uh, uh, every every person has the the option to unmute themselves so if they want to express some comment or some any questions finally to these uh, dignitaries dr mayank dr anila ma'am we have uh, they may, they may just uh, unmute themselves dr sanapala veninchi they want to know about neurosurgery uh what is the fluid therapy in pediatric neurosurgeries i think there is no different uh, uh, fluid therapy for neurosurgeries uh, some uh, some kind of different uh, surgeries for uh, some need to the uh, need to care but basics are same for the neurosurgery yes so uh, with your permission sir uh, i think we can just uh, end the talk right now i think uh, it was so nice of uh, madam minna malde uh, to coordinate the session uh, by dr mayank uh, good start to the new year wish you all a very happy new year thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am uh, to moderate the session it was a very nice lecture by you you cleared you, basics very well and i like those mcqs to keep everybody interactive mm -hmm. Yes, with the session thank you ma'am for great elaboration of this all the uh, answers hey very nice mission i was little late but then i enjoyed whatever i heard <laughs> yes sir these sessions are also available online so just in case people who yeah. missed it they can uh, always uh, go to the youtube channel and the isa uh, national headquarters website and they can you know uh, uh, revise everything that has been taught today's class was excellent because if any person needs or has any doubts regarding pediatric fluid management the class that uh, dr mayank took and the discussion involving dr mayank and dr anila madam it was excellent so with this uh, i take the permission of the house and dr navin sir uh, to uh, finish this session for today yeah. good night everybody have a we'll, nice we'll meet next monday thank we'll you meet next monday thank you sir thank you. thank you isa headquarters to give us uh, you know a good start from the newborn fluid management <laughs> thank you pleasure is all ours thank you very much thank you and goodbye and good wishes <laughs> <laughs>